Uh, so the Imam opens up this chapter, the chapter of marriage, its manners, etc. He says that uh, the scholars, they do not differ that marriage is mustahab. It is recommended. Um, it's something that is encouraged and it has many, many benefits. And he's going to mention a couple of those benefits. Okay? The first of those is offspring. So we're talking about some of the aims and objectives, some of the benefits of being married. Offspring. Um, because the objective here is, is to continue your lineage, if you will. Um, and from the benefits of that is uh, uh, gaining the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by pursuing family life in order to continue humanity, in order to continue the human race. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. The next thing, number two, is uh, seeking the love of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, marriage, uh, through children, if you will, because having a, a large family, it, it basically was encouraged by the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and you are increasing the number of his ummah that he will boast and brag about uh, among the other prophets and messengers. He will say that he had the largest of uh, the largest ummah, the largest nation. And this is something that he will boast and brag about. And this is something that will earn the love of the Prophet The second, or I should say the third thing, is looking for the barakah from your children when they make dua for you. The dua of a righteous child or the intercession of a child who passes away uh, in their youth. Is they will act as an intercession for you. Also, um, from the benefits of marriage, it acts as a fortress from the, um, the shaitan. A fortress from a, 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 a catastrophe uh, of a person's own desires, right? And that's talking about a person's chastity, their modesty. And so marriage, it, 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 it acts as a fortress for this. The next thing he says is um, so that you can, you can relax, right? You can relax in life. You can find comfort in life. You can enjoy the company of your spouse, right? To live with each other, hopefully in harmony and in happiness, in love and in mercy. And all those things can be, uh, they can be great and they can be enriching. He says a couple of these things. Um, and so uh, uh, there's, there's some issues here. The Arabic language is very specific about when it comes to gender. It's either a masculine or a feminine. There's no in-between. Uh, so some things are, are addressed in the masculine, but they're applicable to the feminine. But some things are just specific to gender. right? So uh, some things here are specific to men, and some things are specific to women. Um, so here he says, uh, from those benefits as well of being married is to reduce stress. Is to reduce stress and to reduce anxiety. Not the other way around. <laughs> it's not meant to be a source of stress that you're married. Oh my God. All right, I'm going to push forward. Uh. And this has to do with uh, everyday life, right? Uh, maintaining a house, um, dealing with basic, basic things like cooking and cleaning, uh, decor. Um, Dealing with uh, livelihood, making a living, earning a living. Uh, if a person had to do all of that by themselves, if they really uh, kind of shouldered that burden alone, um, it would be, it would take up all their time. It would consume all of their time. And they would have no time left for seeking knowledge or righteous action. They would be busy earning a living, managing the house, Raising the children, taking care of the, the, the ins and outs, those basic duties. And essentially here, being married, uh, it provides a, a, a teamwork type of environment where tasks are, 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 are championed by one or the other of the spouses. And so this is where we have a hard time today. Um, uh, in that uh, we find ourselves in a situation where often both spouses, they take on the role of earning 
a living. Um, and then somebody's going to have to end up doing all of the other stuff. Unless, you know, of course, they, they manage to divide it up in order to avoid being overburdened, of course. And traditionally, you know, the role was that the men went out and they earned a living and that the women, they stayed home and they managed the household. And the imam points out here, um, because a lot of times um, that traditional role of, of staying home in America, it, it gets, um, it's not very glamorous. It's not championed. And the reason for that is because there's no money involved. And in our culture, money is what matters. And money is how you establish, a it's a yardstick for value. I produce this, this much money and I make this much money. And so he says that the, the righteous, pious woman uh, is a support for faith in this way, if, if that's what she does. Uh, it shouldn't be detracted from or degraded. Um, and without it, without that support, um, then there's just stress and distraction. The heart's busy with, with all of these little things. And it's, it's overwhelming for a person. Another thing here, and this is, we're getting out of some of the, the little nitty gritty stuff into some more of the loftier spiritual aspects of marriage, and that is, from the benefits, is, is jihad and nafs. Right? It's a struggle against the self. It's a, it's a spiritual exercise because marriage is responsibility and marriage is about leadership. Um, it's about fulfilling the rights of your family. So it, it's not about selfishness, and that's a disease, an ania, to be very selfish and not able to extend yourself beyond your own whims and desires. Right? So this is a spiritual exercise here to be able to fulfill the rights of others to be patient with the manners of your spouse. In particular, the man with his wife. Because the Prophet Sallallahu he said that the husband is mas'ul. He's a shepherd with his family. And then the wife is a shepherd with the house, etc., etc. So there has to be a level of patience uh, extended to your spouse when it comes to any character flaws or, 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 or anything of that nature. And also any, any harm that may come from that, you have to deal with it, you have to be patient. And then you can't overlook it. You, know, you can't overlook your spouse's uh, misdeeds and, and, and misgivings. You have to be a source of, of guidance to bring them back to the faith and to, and to the straight way. You have to also strive hard to earn a halal living for them, right? If that's your role as a man, uh, then you, you have to exert yourself in order to earn for your family that which is halal. And then to, of course, uh, raise the children, give them their proper education and upbringing. All of these actions, they, they're extremely virtuous. They're extremely virtuous and rewarding. Uh, this is what marriage is. It's responsibility. It's leadership. Um, and the virtue of, of responsibility is, is huge. And a person that fears this is because they fear their inability or their, in, their, their lack of being able to fulfill others' rights. And so you can really see that dealing with such things, with the family and with children, it's, it's at the same level of jihad, fi sabirillah. It's a real struggle in order to, in order to, to see it done. Mentioned by Imam Muslim, um, and this was uh, a narration that was reported by him alone. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Dinarun anfaqtahu fi sabirillah. A dinar that you spend in the way of Allah, dinarun anfaqtahu fi raqaba. A dinar that you spend to free a bonser, wa dinarun tasaddaqta bihi ala miskin. That you gave to a poor person, wa dinarun anfaqtahu ala ahlika. And that there a dinar that you spent on your family, afdaruha. The best of that, the best, the best money that was spent here is that which was spent on your family, right? And this is, uh, you know, not only is there obligatory spending, but then there's there's voluntary spending that you that you can do, and this, of course, is from the best of spending. I'm gonna wrap it up with pitfalls because I'm sure people are interested in hearing about this, and this is not 
pitfalls of, of, of being married, of, of your marriage coming undone. So the imam, he opened up with the benefits of marriage. What are some of the good things uh, that you get out of marriage? And then there are some pitfalls for you as a person in marriage. The first and the most, the strongest, if you will, of those is the inability to provide a halal living. The inability to keep your income halal. And this is huge in our faith. You're going to feed your family with that income, with that livelihood. Whatever it is that you go out and earn, in our hands it's, it's, it's a check or it's a direct deposit or it's dollars and cents. And, and it doesn't get cleaned when you convert it into food. doesn't matter how the biha, the meat is. He says, this is very difficult. And during the time of Imam al-Ghazali, when he wrote Ihya al Din, he said, especially in our time, and that's a long time ago. He says, especially in our time, with the cost of living and the way that people live, it's very difficult. And the insinuation is here. The possibility is that someone will extend their hand to what is not rightfully theirs. That they will go seeking revenue or resources in the wrong place because they have to fill the you know live up to the expectations of a lifestyle or the cost of their living this is number one this is huge this is a, what it means is that if you are going to get married and this is your case where you're going to sacrifice your your halal your your religion for it this is a major pitfall it's an afat and nikah right it's 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 a destruction it's a catastrophe. The next thing is uh, the inability to fulfill the rights of women as husbands to wives and being patient with them uh, and whatever, um, you know, manners or etiquettes or, or, or lack thereof. This is very, very dangerous. A person, the man, he says, the man, this is gender specific, the man is the shepherd, and that's what I mentioned before, and he is responsible for that. So the man here has been placed at the top of the household and has to bear the burden of of, you know, whatever comes of it. Yeah, as a man, you have to be willing to, to cope with that. Right, and so that's, you know, that's a difficult thing to handle. And some people, they can't handle it. There's some men that they can't handle it. And when they get into that, and they're unable to handle it, it can come undone very quickly. And the likelihood is that they can be oppressive, or they can be abusive. They can become ill-willed and, and, and mean-spirited towards a spouse or a child because they're unable to, to cope with, you know, whatever it is that they're, that they're exposed to in the house. Either they've let it go too long and now it's just backfiring or, um, you know, it's, it's just a situation. Number three, the last one, and that is that the, that the wife or the husband, that the ch children, they, they, they distract you and busy you to the point that you do not make time for the remembrance of Allah. This is the third and final pitfall is that you're going to get married and you're going to allow that marriage and, and your children to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. And so you're going to spend all of your day and all of your night just simply enjoying their company and being with them. And you're not going to allow your heart the space and the time that it needs to ponder and to reflect over the hereafter and the action that's required for that. So... These are the benefits and these are the pitfalls of marriage, right? So basically, uh, the imam concludes with the ruling of marriage, right? So the ruling of marriage, is it wajib, is it mustahab, is it etc.? It's, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. And it has a lot to do with those benefits and those pitfalls. So if a person, for example, um, uh, is, is it better to be married or is it better to be single would be the question. Because we have an idea that, well, you know, marriage is the best thing regardless of the situation. You should all get married. But there's a little bit more to it than just simply a, a, a you know, a broad stroke here with marriage. You have to take into consideration these things. And how, how much benefit is it going to be for you? Or, or is it going to be any type of harm? So if you're a person that, you know, you, you can, you can uh, earn a halal living and support a family, that you have good manners, you can, you can deal with people in your household, your, your husband, your wife, your kids with good manners, regardless of what happens, um, then marriage is going to be beneficial. 
Um, if you're a young person and, and, and you need to get married to kind of subdue those desires, um, then it may be that marriage is better for you. If you need help with your life, with managing the house, with, with dealing with the, the mundane rituals of life, you need, uh, you, need a, you need a teammate, then no doubt marriage is going to be good for you. Um, but if those benefits aren't there, if the benefits that he mentioned just aren't going to be there by getting married, and, and then you're exposed to these pitfalls, well then, not getting married is, is best in that case. It's best in that case. Unless, of course, you're a person that just absolutely requires it to avoid falling into the haram, then you're just going to have to shoulder those pitfalls because it may be that, you know, falling into a major catastrophe um, an illicit relationship is, is worse than, you know, could be worse than what was mentioned previously. And that's where we'll wrap it up. Zakalah here for your patience.